Hello everyone, welcome back to Let's Play the Enism 11 Victory Road Beta. Since last time, I've played the game a bit, and as you might notice, my team has uh, quite a few changes. Uh, it's a bit different from uh, what it was at the end of uh, the last part. As you might notice, uh, I moved some players around. Uh, Heathmore is now near the center. I brought in Ember, who's now a, an advanced player. Well, actually, most of my players are now advanced, with only Goldie and Victor still uh, growing. And then on my bench, I still have Tori and Aitor, who's still a uh, normal rarity. But hopefully one day I'll get uh, the, the right spirits to to rank them up. Uh, what else did what else did I change? I think JP used to be on the bench, but I brought him back in, replacing Aitor. Uh, there are different reasons for that. Mainly it has mainly to do with uh, the skills. Uh, like for instance, Victor gets uh, a boost if he's uh, around different element players. That's why I surrounded him with with uh, wood type players. Uh, also, Heathmore has like focus and scramble. Uh, uh, passive, so he's probably better, you know, uh, in a spot where he might have some focus and scramble battles, and then he can use his uh, long shot Royal Lancer to try to do a chain with one of these three. Um, in terms of defense, I also have, I think, some Gook, yeah, it boosts the castle walls if the players have different elements, so that's why Goldie is a bit uh, further up because she was fire type, so it wasn't going to be helpful. Uh, and Itor, why did I put Itor? Oh, because his boost was same element player, but none of my defenders are uh, wood types. So, yeah, that's why I put it on the, on the side, but I've been... It's still not optimal. Uh, the strategy I have right now uh, might change things as I go along, but I started, you know, making a few changes, and so far it's proven to be quite... Uh, Effective. I've played a few games uh, against uh, the CPU, uh, against uh, Inazuma All Stars. I don't think I've had a single loss or draw. I've won all of my games since then. So it seems I'm doing something right at least. Uh, at least I'm good enough to defeat a level 6 team. <laughs> this is not the most, uh, the strongest team out there. They're stronger than them and I uh, can't wait to, to fight them. That might actually be what we do in this part. Uh, but yeah, I've been uh, also playing a bit of uh, online games. Uh, I did a lobby match uh, for a tournament that I <laughs> registered for. Um, you, if you if you're an English-speaking Inazuma fan, you probably you probably know uh, TXM. Uh, he's a pretty famous YouTuber in the community, uh, doing a lot of Inazuma Eleven related content. He's having a tournament this weekend, and uh, yeah, I registered for it just out of curiosity because it's a tournament that has uh, 256, uh, <laughs> of, yeah, 256 uh, participants, which is absolutely insane. And I just wanted to see how it looked like. Uh, turns out. I was on the waiting list. Turns out uh, a lot of players couldn't attend the the tournament for various reasons, for connection issues, for I don't know, like many reasons. So a lot of people like desisted, and people from the waiting list were brought in. Uh, that includes me. So I was brought in, and I had to, I could play a match. I played one today. My opponent was like level uh, 24. I was still level uh, six or eight or something. Uh, I didn't record the game, but I took a screen cap of uh, both of our teams, and yeah, you can probably imagine how that went. <laughs> I also played a bit of casual mode, and that gave me the answer to one of my early questions: What the heck are those? Uh, those E teams, you know, we have those one, 0, 1, 0, 2, and 0, 3 docks, but we also have E1, E2, and E3. Uh, these docks are actually uh, set teams that you can play in casual mode. Uh, so basically, they're teams that you can't modify, you can't customize them. Everyone is level 10, everyone is that growing rarity, and like it's a way to play casual matches with, uh, with your friends or with anyone really uh, without having to worry about one team being uh, at a much higher level than another. Uh, so that's why you can't change them. A bit disappointing, honestly, because when they announced that feature, that the casual mode feature, I think it's called enjoy mode in Japanese, I th they only mentioned the level 10. So I thought what they would do is like, kind of like, I think Pokemon does that uh, with like level 50, is like, take your current team and just like, align everyone at level 10. 
So that way you can still keep your, your the, the team you want, the characters you want, your equipment or whatever, but uh, everyone is level 10, so it's a uh, balance for all players. Turns out, no, it doesn't take, it doesn't keep your team. It really goes with the default team. So that's a bit disappointing, but at least it allowed me to play this with a, a friend of mine who, uh, well, two friends of mine actually, who hadn't, um, like, hadn't had the time to train uh, as far as I did. Uh, so, like, to avoid having me like level 8 and then being like level uh, 4 or 5 we just went with it, uh, the casual teams and it was it was pretty fun uh had a few wins had a few draws uh but yeah it's it, I, I was able to play online with friends and it went pretty well so I'm pretty happy with uh, with online so far haven't done any rank matches I've heard it's pretty horrible everyone is super high level there's a lot of lag if you're playing with people from Japan uh, I will experience that one day, <laughs> I'm not there yet, and I'm, I'm fine staying at caravan rank with my zero points of experience, but uh, yeah, for now I'll just focus on doing a bit more uh, single player content. What else did I do off screen? Uh, oh yeah, Victory Gallery by the way, something I noticed. I'm at 11 victories right now, so yeah, I've, I've, been, I've played quite a bit. Uh, yeah, what I thought was that once you got a victory, it would just unlock one picture. And then as you get more victories, like the gallery progressively unlocks. Turns out, I mean it seems, I haven't tried it yet, but given what I'm looking at right now, it seems that you can, un like, you can choose which picture to unlock. So like, I could start with the first one, I could unlock, I don't know, this one right here, uh, and so I can choose which 11 pictures I want to unlock right now. Knowing that, I think what I'm going to do is just wait until I have 100 victories and unlock all of them at once. <laughs> I think I'm just going to do that because if I start unlocking a, a few now, I'm just going to look at them and be like, oh, I want to know what the next one looks like, and I'll just, I'll just be frustrated. So I'm just going to wait, there's no pressure, uh, people so far have been pretty okay in terms of spoiler like i haven't seen a lot of uh spoilers on social media or on discord or anything so i think i can still uh dodge the spoilers for a bit longer and hopefully like slowly but surely work my way uh towards the 100 victories to unlock everything and then maybe you can have a we can have a a part in this let's play to talk about what's in this uh these, uh, these illustrations might be some uh, interesting things story-wise, we'll see. Um, last thing, you might be wondering why I'm in this menu. I've actually started reading uh, this uh, this little um, menu, the help menu. You know, in the first part I was like, I don't need this, uh, I'll figure these things out. Turns out I really, really needed this because there's a ton of very useful information in this. Some of which is just not in the video tutorials and I don't know why he didn't mention it. Um, like this right here, the cursor assistance. This is super helpful. Uh, like, you know how I often, like, uh, struggled to move the cursor around and select the right character to give it to a pass to. Uh, turns out you can use ZL to lock onto nearby characters, so it's easier to select the the characters you want to uh, give it, do a pass to. So that's pretty helpful. Uh, what else did I find? Uh, what else did I find? There, there, there are a lot of information that I, uh, I I wrote them down on my phone, but my phone is out of battery right now, so I can't check. <laughs> I should have better prepared uh, this recording session. Um, pressure, physical, yes, all the stats are explained and how helpful they are to everything. Uh, like, the, th the one that surprised me the most is how intelligence is the one that you need to do the scrambles. It's so... I don't know. It feels really <laughs> random, but anyways. I'll, I'll, I'll look into that later when I have to really uh, pick like the optimal members for my team and pick some equipment as well. So I'll think about that more later at higher levels. Uh, what did I notice? Yeah, mini battles, focus battles, scrambles, tension. Um, yeah, this, this right here. This changes everything. Breach, save, do not trigger below 30% tension. I've seen so many people being like, I'm using skills to boost my breach rate, but it never triggers. That's one of the reasons. You need to have at least 30% tension left for breach or save to activate. This is super important because like, it's not just a critical hit, like random crit. It's also like you have to manage your tension efficiently so that it can trigger. You might have like a 200% boosted breach rate, but if you 
used up all your tension without thinking, then that skill is completely worthless and you're not going to get a breach or a save. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. Uh, it can be a game changer. What else did I learn? What else did I learn? Yeah, the zone. Uh, this, this one, I did not learn anything, but I noticed that there is an extra space between towards a and teammate. And ever since I saw that extra space, I haven't been able to unsee it. <laughs> Like, like, literally, uh, like, before recording, I was like, I don't remember which slide that is, and because my phone is out of battery, I, I can't look at my notes to see, like, which slide I had to stop on to say that. I didn't even have to think. Just as I <laughs> arrived on that slide, my eyes were immediately drawn to the extra space. I just can't unsee it. It drives me crazy. I hate when this happens. In, uh, in print media, in, in video games, on anything, anything that has text. When there's an extra space, my eyes will immediately notice and it will drive me crazy. I hate this, I hate this. Okay, uh, what else did I... Uh, this thing right here about the shot blocks got me a bit confused. Moves that can be blocked by shot block are predetermined. I wonder what they mean by that. Is it like you can only stop certain shots with shot block and some of them like cannot be blocked? I don't know what they mean exactly. Uh, maybe it'll be obvious to someone who's more familiar with, with than me with uh, older games because maybe that's something that's always been there. Uh, I just don't see what they mean, so I'm a bit confused. Anyways, uh, what else? What else? There was another one that was really, really crazy and actually changed my life when I learned it. Uh, fatigue! I finally know what those little droplets are. Every time the Keeper uh, stops a shot, it will gain one droplet that represents its fatigue. And the more fatigue you accumulate, the more your DF will decrease for your Keeper techniques. So that's another uh, thing they put in place to balance the game a little and make keepers more vulnerable over time. Uh, I guess I don't have an opinion on that specific uh, thing. I, I just like the way goalkeepers have been balanced overall, like the combination of uh, breach and save, the keeper gauge and fatigue, which has always been there, just never knew it was there. Just I've seen the effects without knowing that they were specifically triggered by the fatigue. So yeah, overall, I think they did a pretty good job with balancing uh, uh, the goalkeepers over there. This one, this one changed my life. Like it completely flipped my word upside down. Technical combos. I've been using them without even noticing, actually. Uh, I've been re-watching uh, previous parts uh, while like editing them and uploading them to YouTube. And I noticed I actually used tactical combos before without knowing. Um, so when you use a special move during a focus battle, you will get this little pop-up, Tactical Combo 1, Tactical Combo 2, etc. It depends on how many uh, special moves you use in a row. When you do that, your next shot is going to be powered up. Not only that, the tension cost is going to decrease. That changes absolutely everything. because. Up until now, because the tension gauge is here, right? So like you have like this limited supply of tension points that you can use for all techniques uh, in the midfield, like uh, dribbles or blocks, but also your shots, yeah? So you might be tempted to say, to think, okay, I only have this amount of tension and I know that Axel uh, has Fire Tornado and it seems to be a very costly uh, technique, so like say I'm a Frody right now, I might be tempted to say I'm just gonna just gonna break through without a technique so I can save up my my tension. And it's kind of what I've been doing so far. I haven't been using uh, midfielder moves a lot. Turns out, if you do that, yes, you might be spending tension to use that move, but not only will your next shot be stronger, it'll be cheaper to use, and uh, I'll find a way to it did this uh i think i remember i think it was in part two uh th there was a point where exactly that happened i used a special move as a midfielder and passed the ball to axel who used pirate tornado and it was cheaper that also explained to me uh those uh where is it I, I, there should be an image somewhere uh to explain that come on 
uh, you know the little yellow squares? There you go, there you go. See the three yellow squares here? I haven't gotten explicit confirmation from the, the help menu or anything, but I'm convinced that this is the cost, the tension cost. It never tells you like the numer numeric value, like, oh, it's uh, 50 TP or whatever. But this gives you an idea, like, this is worth, let's say, three units of tension. But when I do a technical combo, it can go as low as one square, so one unit of tension. So this is a way, like, instead of just saving your tension and using all of it for a big shot, a big shot like that, you could use your tension to win focus battles, strengthen your next shot, and have that shot being cheaper, so you can still use it after spending your tension on the on the triple move, and that completely changes everything, because. You, you have this idea that tension being limited is going to limit how many uh, special moves you use. But the reality is that this game actually incentivizes you to use moves as often as possible, because there's only benefits to using special moves. It's... it's so good. This completely changed my, my, my world when, when, I, when I learned this, this whole technical combo thing. Because now, the way I play is very different. I, I don't hesitate to use uh, technic high, uh, special moves in the midfield, in the hopes that it will strengthen my next shot, or my next chain shot, and that really, like, this is really important for attention management, which is really the key to playing, I think. It's really how you manage your tension. This is going to be a critical part to it. Uh, last thing I learned, I noticed it as I was uh, scrolling through uh, the images, substitutions. I actually went back to check how substitution worked earlier. And I saw this, I was like, yeah, okay, uh, you can do this from the formation screen, anytime the game is interrupted, okay, that's it. What I didn't notice is that there's a part, there's a second page to substitutions. After substitutions, morale increases. AT and DF increases by 15% for substitute and 5% for same position player. This is why the CPU was always doing substitutions. This is why this is even a feature. This is what the bench is for. You get a huge boost for substituting players and putting them on the pitch. Again, this completely changed my mind. Now, every half time, just bringing more new players on the pitch just to get some boosts. Not just a boost from the coach, like he has a, he has a skill like uh, when you uh, bring someone on the pitch, they get like 10% AT uh, for like 15 seconds or for 60 seconds or something. I don't remember the, the scale, the exact scale. But like, even excluding that specific skill, generally speaking, every time you bring someone in, it increases your AT and DF for that player. So that can be actually super critical. If you're doing like a, a free kick or, or penalty or whatever, uh, it can be a good thing to like bring someone in instead of your previous player because they will get an ATDF boost. So their shot might actually be stronger. Maybe I haven't tested it, but like there's, there's definitely a benefit to substituting players. And I only learned that by reading this help menu this morning when I was bored. I was like, I don't want to start playing right away. Let's just let's just read a little. Let's see what I missed. And turns out I missed a lot. There's a lot in here that's super helpful and they don't tell you in the uh, in the video tutorials. So yeah, uh, if you didn't know, I hope I taught you something, which is definitely not what I expected when I started this video. I, I thought you guys would be teaching me things, given how I suck at this game. But uh, yeah, so if you didn't know, there it is. And if you knew, well, uh, I'm glad you knew before me. <laughs> and you didn't have to suffer the same way I did. Um, anyways, that's a lot of talking, but yeah, that's basically what happened uh, until then, like, off-screen. So now, I want to do something different. I want to actually play against a new team. Because I've played Unism All-Stars quite a bit. So now I have two options. Either I unlocked Ilias Masters, which seems to be a roughly level 9-10 team, so kind of on par with my current team. Or I could unlock the Death Zone difficulty, which I've been told the teams are between level 10 and 20. I think it would make more sense to go with Alias Masters. Oh wait, actually, <laughs> I actually have enough for both. I just noticed I have 45 Victory Stones. Uh, yeah, let's just let's just do both. Let's just unlock Death Zone difficulty and Alias Masters, and 
and we'll decide. But I think it would be maybe more interesting to do Ilias Masters, at least for this part, just to see how strong they are. Uh, and also to finally fight new players, because I've been <laughs> fighting the same two teams for uh, a few hours now, and it's getting a bit repetitive. So now I can finally find so fight someone else. So let's see, Death Zone. Yeah, they're slightly stronger than me. Oh, they have top players. See? Amber, Sharp, and Ricardo. All three are top players. I know it's supposed to be like a gold color. I've seen people calling it like, oh, gold, I got a gold spirit, whatever. To me, it's just yellow. It's like piss yellow. <laughs> I, I, I really don't like this color. Uh, although, although, now that I see it on screen, it does look a bit more gold than what it looked like on, on previous screenshots. Like on previous screenshots, the yellow looked really yellow. I really didn't like it. Uh, but anyways, oh wow, yeah. Oh my god, Valen is legendary. Okay, yeah. It's gonna take me a while before I, <laughs> I fight Ilias Masters on uh, Death Zone difficulty. But for now, I think what I'm going to do, yeah, is uh, try to fight Ilias Masters on Inazuma difficulty, on normal difficulty. Let's see how it goes. Because if I beat them, then uh, I can confidently say that I've seen, at least seen like all the characters, all the teams, and maybe I can either work my way through Death Zone next or start playing online, who knows. Uh, so yeah, I guess this is what this part is going to be. I'm gonna be fighting Alias Masters with my new and improved team. And with all the things I've learned, you're gonna see, you're gonna see how how better at this game I am now. <laughs> I, I'm only just slightly better, I'll be honest. Yeah. Oh, it's new music. Here they are, Alias Academy. Players have worked really hard to prepare for this day. When Sweeping win. Oh, that's pretty collide, helpful. 30 seconds, 100% chance of winning is focus and scramble. What about them? What did they get? Ah, oh, I kind of wanted this one because now I'm really noticing that I need more spirits. So I, every time I see I ha have this one, I just use it immediately without thinking. Okay, let's start with Waxing Moon. This allows me to have uh, like better luck with uh, with focus battles early on because I need to build tension very early on. There you go. Uh, yeah, I can skip that one. I should have enough tension now to do Royal Lancer, start up a technical combo. Uh, except I didn't aim. <laughs> I wanted to do a, uh, uh, like try to do a chain shot, but <laughs> it's fine. I weakened Valen, which is, uh, there you go. I've gotten better at doing uh, defense, as you can see. Uh, it's still not perfect. I still there's still a lot I don't understand about how defense works. Uh, but we're improving. We're improving. Uh, oh, oh, there's no one here. Uh, Elliot, let's try a death zone. Oh, he's taking it directly? Okay. Man. I'm looking at a lot. Might be able to score soon. Nah. I should have moved to the side. Hey, presto. Oh, okay. Uh... Yeah, so like, I think the combo stops if you lose the ball. Shaking off the opposition. 
Uh, sure, Dancing Bunny. Let's go. And maybe... Doom Sword Slash after that? Yes! Oh! Okay. The tower. Is it gonna block? Is it gonna be enough to block it? No. Oh my god, there's still 280. <laughs> I can still- I can still shoot! I can still shoot, nice! Oh, this is going in. This is absolutely going in. Hell yeah! Nice! They'll have to stay sharp if they want to keep up this momentum! Nice! Okay. Uh, this was Flash Dash. So yeah, it feels so much better now that I'm not scared to use special moves. Oh, it's half time. Oh, come on. I wanted to try to shoot. But yeah, once you realize how it's actually helpful to use moves without like being scared of using them, it starts feeling so much better because you don't really feel restricted you just you just feel awesome <laughs> you just feel awesome for using moves um let's see let's see uh i'm gonna replace sure let's go with hurley replacing hurley i don't really want to do that i'm mostly doing that to uh like get some ben benefits from doing a substitution. Let's see how the coach's instructions can impact the game. I don't really need Tori instead of Hurley. Maybe it'll be smarter to put Tori first and then replacing her with Hurley and later on. Half is I don't know. I'll think about it for for next time. All right. Got the ball. Oh. Okay. Defense. Uh. Keep. Nice. Come on, by long. And try chain with Ember. Am I gonna have enough tension for that? We'll see. Wait, I do! Hell yeah! It's so satisfying! <laughs> when you're able to pull out so many special moves! Like, way back when! He knows it on the blog, like, yeah, there's tension and so on. Oh, wait, am I- oh, I'm just seven points away from scoring! Oh my god! Oh, that would've been awesome if I was able to score right away. That would've been so awesome. Uh, but yeah, like, when Hino introduced the, uh, the concept of, uh, focus, uh, I mean, uh, attention. When he announced that, everyone was understandably, uh, worried about it. Like, uh, oh, we're not going to be able to use moves as as much as before. We're going to have to... Oh, no foul. I got lucky there. Uh, no! Ah, uh, I could have scored just now. Uh, what was I saying? I'm really bad at doing commentary and playing at the same time. Uh, what was I saying? Okay, let's score. Um, yeah, so everyone was worried that tension would restrict how much, how many special moves we use during the game, or that it would force us to, you know, use like normal shots and like, like play real life football, you know, uh, which can be fun on its own. But oh, am I going to score with 1180 shot? <laughs> I love this. I love, I love this. The way this is balanced, I love this. Um, yeah, everyone thought this was going to turn into like FIFA, basically. But turns out, no. Like he said, you might, you're going to end up using moves even more than in past games, and this this turned out to be so true. Oh, that's a loss. Like, look how many moves I've been using since the start of this match. I don't think there's been even a single point in the match where it was like. Out of TP. Uh, oh my god, pass to Goldie, 72%. Yes, absolutely. More. 
Uh, yeah, definitely do uh, do a chain shot. I mean, a long shot rather. And maybe, just maybe, Faye might be able to line up. Oh no, he's not moving. Just like watching. It's okay, guys. You can just stand there. It's not like I needed you to 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 help me there. It's okay. Um, there you go. Two zero, my first try. I'm so happy. I thought it was going to be struggling against that team, but no. It's an easy win. Oh, man. It feels so nice when you actually know what you're doing. They got the win and, they got the glory. and yeah, I don't even know if I finished uh, what I was saying earlier. I have zero attention span. Uh, but yeah, basically, tension is awesome. You can use so many moves. If you know what you're doing, you basically never run out of tension. You never stop using moves. As you use moves, your team is stronger. You're basically unstoppable. This is really cool. Uh, obviously, it might be more complicated against real, like real life players online, of course. But like against the computer so far, it's been working out great for me, and I'm having tons, tons of fun. I was really worried about tension early on, but now all my worries have just disappeared. Let's do another one. I've been recording for like what 30 minutes, maybe. Uh, let's do another one before I stop recording, and then for the next part, we'll try doing Dead Zone. And there, the game was probably going to be much harder. <laughs> I'm going to be, I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to stop saying, oh, actually, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. I hate this game. This game is too hard. But for now, I'm having a ton of fun. I'm very happy about myself. That's what matters. All right, let's go. Explosion. Yeah. I don't think I even used my tactics. Like, I used Waxing Moon early on. But then I didn't use any tactics. I didn't need to. That was much easier than I thought, honestly. I thought I would be struggling a lot more. Uh, I need to remember which button I assigned it to, because every time I just pause and look at <laughs> look at uh, the buttons, because I need to find. Uh, where I put the taxi I want to use. Alright, let's use a presto. See, Doomsword Slash only had one square just now. You can rewind if you want, but yeah, like that's. It really has a huge effect on how much the techniques cost. Oh, he got a save! He got a save. Nice. Lucky. Uh. This is gonna be very dumb, but let's do. Let's try to do a chain shot over there. This is probably going to end up weaker than if I just did a. Uh, a direct shot, a single shot, because it's going to weaken all the way to uh, to Fey. But I can use Bouncing Bunny. Like, see, see how little tension all this uses. It's so easy to do chains. Oh, oh, I'm scoring right away. This is awesome. Right there in the lead. Like up, up until now, I was like, yeah, the game is fun. It's a bit you have to get used to everything, but there's some good ideas. Now I'm absolutely convinced that I love this game. <laughs> we'll see how it goes in multiplayer. Maybe I'll just hate to do multiplayer, but given how much single player content is going to be in the game, I don't think I'll ever get bored of this. Oh, ah, that's nice going out. It's all right. And we're back in action with a throw-in. <laughs> Here come the special tactics. Oh, bullhorns! What does it do? <laughs> oh. Rest to defend. Can they stop this? Can they make it? Can Jagged? 
Yes, I did. JP, good job. Uh, there's something also I, I learned uh, about the uh, the castle walls. The the yeah, the castle walls. Uh, what you can do is. Um, oh. Pass. Pass. P pass. Thank you. Oh, I had to cool down. Oh well. It's fine. Uh, what did I? S Seriously? You're using wormhole for this? I mean, sure, but okay. Uh, yeah, the castle walls. You can like place a wall where. Oh my god! Oh my god! No! That was too good to be true. Oh my god! Ember, please do a chain. Please do a chain, Ember. I'm begging you. Ember, Ember! Ah, uh, I don't know if there's a way to trigger a chain. But like, I've I've done it before. I've done a shot chain with a long shot. You can do it. I just I wish there was a way for the, for the AI to like understand that I needed to just move one step to the left. <laughs> oh wow. Um, once again, I started talking about something and then I forgot to finish my sentence. The castle walls. So you can place a wall wherever you want. But if you move your cursor to uh, to the opponent instead, you can tell your defender to actually like attack the the, the the opponent directly and tackle them and get the ball. Which saves a lot of time and is actually more efficient than using a castle wall. <laughs> Uh -huh. Breakthrough. Zone. Track and drive. And I think by now, Faye should be done cooling down. Yes, he is. Boom. Four hundred! Oh my God! Hell yeah! This makes me so happy because this let's play started so wrong. <laughs> I was like, my first game when I, when I first played, like I saw everyone on Twitter talking about how okay, it's kind of hard. Like even Hino had to make a tweet saying, "Hey, I know everyone is struggling, but like, trust me, it, it gets better. It gets better." And so, like, I knew I was going to have to struggle at first, but I was struggling so much. I thought, oh man, I'm, I am never, ever getting better at this game. It really felt that way. Okay, so let's see. Can I? Oh no, I can't here. Well, Goldie, Goldie's unstoppable. Uh, well, I'll try to remember to show you next time, like how you can, uh, you can instruct a defender to tackle uh, an opponent. Um, but yeah, I was convinced that I would be struggling to play this game and I would never get better and it would just be awful from start to finish. Turns out, it's a lot more manageable than I thought. Ah. Uh, yeah, I got greedy there. Alright. Flash dash. Then I'm gonna pass to. Oh no, there's a cooldown. Oh! Let's see. Let's see if I can do Ember and then Bylong. But yeah, th that's one thing I really don't like actually about special moves. The cooldown, which is, I guess, is a necessary evil. Uh, ah, see? Dragon Dive is also uh, cooling down right now. I have no way of knowing when a game, or when a move is still cooling down until I try to score. Like I try to shoot and I see, oh, actually, you can't use any move right now. It's really annoying. Oh, purple Goldie. Nice. Can you? You can. Okay. That's going to score, right? 
Unless he has a save? We'll see. But this seems... Yeah. Yeah, it's too... There you go. Three to none! Even better than last time. Alright. Let's see if I can get another spirit. Just one last spirit. Well, nope. That's the end. Well. That ended on such a good note. Thank you, Tori. You did nothing. <laughs> Oh man, I love Tori. She's one of my favorite characters ever. Uh, but yeah, I haven't been able to use her a lot in this game so far. Hopefully I can level her up and uh, make use, a better use of her. Also, I just noticed like earlier, Faye scored all three goals. He's really my MVP right now, Faye. I love him. Alright! I got quite a few uh, alias spirits. But until I unlock the, the team as playable, I won't be able to use them, so... Better start playing online to unlock them, I guess. Alright. I'm just going to very quickly go back to the team dock, upgrade my characters, especially Goldie. So I, the, only, the only player on my pitch that's not an advanced player is Victor. I'm gonna need to upgrade him soon. But yeah, uh, that's basically... Oh, item drop rate is 25%, that's gonna be very helpful. I've seen that quite a few characters have uh, item drop uh, skills, including rare drops. Like, I think Aphrodite has... Uh, wait, where is it? Aphrodite... Yeah, team's rare item drop rate, 25%. So, like, I feel I could build, like, an entire team that's just, like for farming, like <laughs> farming rare items. So I'll probably do that at some point, you know, once I've run out of things to do and I just want to complete the shop and everything, uh, or r like bring all my characters to legendary. But for now, I'm just going to keep having fun with my team, which I really like. I think like there's pretty much everyone on this team that's been helpful to me so far. Uh, even the defenders, which you haven't seen a lot uh, in this part because uh, I, <laughs> I've been the one attacking pretty much all the time. Uh, They've been pretty good to me so far. Uh, the only ones, yeah, is really the bench. I've only just started using characters from the bench. Xanark, haven't been using him a lot. Arian, I pretty much stopped using him after I replaced him uh, with uh, more over here. Bylong is really good. I hope I can get more spirits to uh, level him up further. But yeah. Uh, I'm starting to really understand this game and really enjoy it. So I can't wait to try harder difficulties and eventually start facing real people online. Uh, hopefully I won't be facing level 30 teams right away. Uh, but yeah, this really looks like the kind of game I could be playing for many, many, many hours. Not everything is perfect and I definitely have some feedback to give them. I'm just waiting, you know, to play a bit more to sort my th my thoughts before uh, putting all my comments on Inuzuma Post. But right now, I'm very happy with uh, what they've done. It's been it's been it was very risky to redo everything from scratch, pretty much. But they've got a really fun and addictive system right now. So yeah, good job, level five. You've convinced me. You've absolutely convinced me. Hey, Tori is a growing player now. Yay! Awesome. Alright then. Hi, Tori. You're the only normal player. You need to step up, step up your game now. Alright, I'm going to stop recording here. Everyone, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time for some more Inuzuma 11 Victory Road Beta. Uh, probably the Death Zone difficulty. Uh, we'll see how it goes. I can't wait to find out. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.